Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be doing, uh, well, uh, somebody noticed uh, as they were going through the videos and they sent me a message that we have all these different videos and all these different casts and splints and techniques, uh, but for some reason, somewhere along the line, I forgot to do a video about how to do a radial gutter cast. If you look through the videos, you'll find one on an ulnar cast and you'll find one how to do a, a clam digger or a cobra cast. Uh, but uh, for whatever reason, uh, we I didn't do one on how to do a radial gutter cast, which is usually ordered when you have uh, injury to the hand, uh, number two metacarpal, number three metacarpal, or either one or both of these uh, phalanges. Um, down here you'll notice the stuff we have ready, uh, I have already laid out. Um, you'll need three strips, uh, and again, this is just one version of doing it. I've, I've seen other videos, there's other ways of doing it. Uh, this is the way that I favor. Uh, again, this isn't written in stone, but if you like this method, um, this will be the way to do it. There's there's one long stocking it that'll be for the for the, the fingers involved, the hand and the arm. There are two shorter ones that I'm gonna use for the two fingers not involved and the thumb. Uh, I brought, brought out three packages of cast tape, I think I think I'm only going to use two, um, and some padding, and of course the safety scissors, the, the bandage scissors, which we're going to go ahead and get started now. So we're going to go ahead and start off like we do with the ulnar gutter, and uh, with the with the cobra cast or the, the clam digger cast. We're going to start by putting tape in between the fingers and secure. Excuse me, I apologize. Cotton in between the fingers and and securing it with tape. So you take a couple little strips of cotton. You fold it over a few times. You place it in between the fingers like so. Get some tape. Make sure your tape is long enough to go all the way around the fingers and stick to itself. The tape never ever has to be tight. It's just primarily to hold the cotton in place. So like me, if you're working with pediatrics, uh, they're not reaching in there and trying to remove that cotton. The whole, the whole idea with the cotton is just to keep that, that nasty macerated uh, toe jammy buildup in between the fingers to keep it at a minimum or hopefully keep it away altogether. So you're going to start off just like this and we're going to talk about those strips that I just presented to you at the beginning of the video. So I'll bring out my scissors. Let's start with the easy one. Let's start with the thumb just so you guys get the idea of what I'm about to do here. I'm going to cut a little slit in this and then what I'm going to do is that slit the thumb is going to slide to here. This is going to go around the wrist, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll do it right here in front of you so you can see. I'm going to spread this first part open, and I'm going to wrap that around the fingers, down the hand, slide the second part over the thumb, just like so. And so that way, we've gotten that part handled. And eventually, when I'm done making the cast, this will be opened up the thumb, and these two fingers, number four and five, will be free. So those three will be free to use. So uh, you, you have seen some people in other videos where they just put, they put that little slip on there like that. I found that, that creating it this way, it makes it near impossible. Nothing's impossible, but it makes it near impossible to slip it off. The next piece will be for these two fingers that will also eventually not be in the cast. And I'll show you the cut. This is very, very specific. You do the first cut, and you measure about how long his fingers are, so about there, and then this would be the second cut. So it looks like this, and then we'll do the exact same thing we did with the wrist. We'll take that very, very last piece, like we slid over the thumb, and we'll slide it over those two fingers that will not be in the cast, and then we'll take that first hole and we'll slide it over the two fingers that will be in the cast. And then we take the second hole and we slide it over the thumb. So what we've done is cr we created an opening for the thumb, an opening for those two fingers, and now we've isolated the two that will not be in the cast. Now let's focus on the two that will be in the cast, assuming that either these fingers are injured or fractured or the hand is injured or fractured in this particular 
uh, working zone. So again, we'll measure the arm out. Nope, you don't have to move, that's okay. Thank you though. We'll go from the elbow all the way past the tips of the fingers and we'll do a little extra because we know when you start to spread the stocking net on this wider diameter here, it's not gonna be as long. So we'll cut right there. This will be garbage. And then we'll do the same two cuts, however, there's gonna be a shift. So the first cut, we know we need to be at least as long as the middle finger. So let's start with that one. So that's our first cut right there. Because the cast has to go at least, at least to the nail beds is what most providers want. That's our first cut. And then we measure the distance to the thumb, which is about that far. And the second cut will be on the opposite side. So it'll be on this side here. And again, this is what it should look like. So here we go. We will slide this on, just like we did the other two pieces. Here's your first opening, and here's your second opening. Now, that last little sleeve right there is going to go over the injured fingers carefully because they might be fractured. And then the first hole we made is going over, over the ring finger and the pinky finger. And then that other hole you made for the thumb again. We slide all the way down the arm. We have plenty to make the cast now. As far as length goes, come in here, get rid of your wrinkles, get rid of all your folds, make sure it looks nice and neat. What you've done, you've isolated the three fingers that will not be in the cast and the two that will be in the cast. Now, this part's important. We'll do this part real quick because this is the easy part. We'll, we're gonna do the arm. We're just gonna, we're just gonna pad up the arm real quick and easy it's no big deal. Overlap halfway every time. Doesn't have to be tight. At the end of the cat, or excuse me, at the end of the patty, I'll go ahead and put a bumper there. And then now, this is the part that really matters, guys. When you come up to start patting the hand and casting the hand, you wanna make sure that the thumb and these two fingers are straight out, and you want them to bring these two fingers folded down as much as they can tolerate with a fracture. So, again, you can help hold like so, if they'll let you, and eventually what you're looking at, if I may, I'm going to show you the different angles of what this should look like. We'll get this out of the way. So as you're looking at it, I'll come around here. So you can see these two are going to be upright. And these two are going to be down. There's your thumb. And I'll give it back over here. There's a good angle right there. You can kind of get the idea of what it looks like. And you want to have them in as, much, as close to this position as possible before you wrap with cotton. If you start to wrap with the cotton and then you have them do this, all those wrinkles, all those folds will bunch up your cotton and they'll have skin issues. You don't want that. So here we go. We start working our way up into the hand. for the tips of the fingers. One to two passes with the cotton is totally adequate because remember when we go to remove the cast with the cast saw, we never cut up here. We cut, we cut through the midlines, but we never cut up here. So it's okay if this isn't as thick as this and that will allow you some better shaping with your fiberglass. I like to make a little three-fold bumper in between the ring finger and the middle finger to give just that little extra bit of space there. So when they're, if for whatever reason they're moving their ring finger, 
it diminishes the, the chances of them rubbing on the fiberglass. And it saves you from having to put moleskin there if done properly. There are going to be times when the patient's going to come to you requesting that moleskin because it's just rubbing, there's nothing they can do about it. And that doesn't mean that you failed in making your cast, um, it just means they, they just want some moleskin. You could turn this way a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Up here, I'm creating little strips. to create proper padding. And then I'm using my scraps, whatever scraps I have, to fill in the spots that look a little thin. And that way there's plenty of padding around the knuckles and where you're gonna be laying down the fiberglass. Come up here, I'm gonna create the bumpers that I would normally create around the thumb and around the palm. And then we're gonna move on to our cast. one last bumper all the way around the palm and that will also act as a, as a little security lock to lock all that stuff down that I just all those little strips I made I'm lucky in that the patient that I'm using right now is able to maintain this position without a lot of discomfort some people will fold this over prior to the fiberglass. Other people will lay down a fiberglass layer and then fold this over. The choice is yours. Um, what we'll do, I'll actually, you know what I'll do on purpose? I'll leave one undone. So you can see, you can see it with and without the fold. And that way you can decide for yourself which one you prefer. You want the fingers in the cast, but you want to be able to see the fingertips and the nail beds. And then I had some extra pieces of tape here I saved on purpose for this reason. Now there are people that are able to do this um, without using the tape to hold down the ends and more power to you um, I can do that but for video purposes it wouldn't look very professional uh, and I'd have to go very very fast and I'd rather go much slower so for that reason I'm opting to use the tape so I can take my time as I'm going through these crevices showing you the proper way to lay the fiberglass down instead of rushing it so that'll hold everything in place while I get the fiberglass ready. All right, so I've gone ahead and gotten the fiberglass ready. Again, we could go through the whole fiberglass prep thing, wetting it and, and shaking the excess water out. Again, if you've watched any of the videos uh, that, we've, that I've done, um, you already know the whole routine about how to lay the fiberglass on and how much to wet it and all that stuff. We're skipping, we're skipping all that like intro stuff so we can get right to the cast because this is, this is really the whole reason you're watching. So in this particular case, this young man, his fingers are long enough to fit the two inch pretty well. If for whatever reason you had a smaller hand, a smaller, like a child or a pediatric, you could always cut this and turn it into a one inch. Cut it right down the middle for about, about 10 to 12 inches and you could use both strips, which I'll demonstrate. Once I have this on, I'll demonstrate the other method as well. But you start at the fingers and you roll it, you roll it one to two times. And again, you don't roll it tight at all. You just roll it on there one to two times, just to start, just to get it going. And then on your second turn, on your second turn, you start to slant down. Come this way so they can see. You start to slant down. Use your finger or your thumb, create that base. I need you to come around this side so they can see. Come on all the way around. Okay, watch this. I'm going to do it again so everybody can see what I just did. I did two turns and then I came real far down. I used my thumb so I could come around the wrist. As I come through the wrist, I come up at an angle on purpose. I go in between the thumb, come around, I 
come right through here, right through the palm. I come up through the knuckles, and then the last little tricky part, I come up through the fingers and I do a slip. working our way down the arm just like so just like that perfect and then we'll do the arm all the way down like you've seen us do numerous times I want you to count it I said earlier I went ahead and saved that one piece and unlike these other pieces where we, we folded beforehand this one I folded afterwards so that you can see because we're going to put a second layer on there in just a moment over here where you have this little flap you can actually trim this and you can lay it down as you're shaping the cast so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my hand to shape his cast just like so and what you want is you want, as you look at it, you want the wrist tilted back a little bit for comfort reasons. I use all my fingers and my hand to mat down the first layer of fiberglass, give it its shape, come down this way so you can see from the front. I'm using my index finger to bring in the fiberglass. This, as I move my index finger away, you'll see how it gives his ring finger more space to move. And the only thing making contact with the ring finger is all that cushion I laid there. Again, it doesn't look the fanciest it's supposed to look because we haven't put the top layer on yet, but this is the core of the cast. Getting rid of all the high bumps, making sure you have a nice, a nice bend to the fingers, to the hand. We'll let that set up for just a few moments. If you want to come around and show the different angles of this while I get the other fiberglass ready, come this way for a sec. You can see how you have his wrist straight like an arrow. You don't want it to drop down. Fingers are bent down. You have plenty of padding on all the edges to protect him from the edges of the cast. And again, if you look here, you have a nice, a nice gap between the ring finger and the middle finger. You have a nice gap so he has full function of this without having to fill that in with moleskin. So as I mentioned earlier, if you're working with somebody that has a smaller hand or smaller fingers, you can take the first 10 to 12 inches of the cast tape. And I'm going to show you something that's a really, really cool trick to use on a small hand or small fingers. Go down about 10, 12 inches, and then what I want you to do is just cut like so. Now, what you're going to do, remember you have at least three, four, five minutes of working time. Save that for just a sec. Save that right there. Don't worry about that. Take this guy. Open, 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 and start with the fingers again. Now again, we're pretending that his fingers are a little smaller, but you can take this strip, you can start your turns on your fingers, so it's not a waste of, of material, and then you take this one that you cut, and now watch this. Now look, my end piece is right here. There's my end piece. So watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come in here at an angle, like so. Now watch. Come on down so they can see. So watch, I'm gonna do it again. I, I wanna make sure everybody catches this. You're gonna let it drop right there. You're gonna get this guy, come in at an angle like an X. Now watch. Catch that end piece that you just laid down. Come through here, like I said, like an X. You've just created an X, which is gonna, it's reinforcing rebar for the fiberglass. So you don't have to lay a whole bunch of fiberglass on there and he's not able to move his fingers. You just created your reinforcing spine, your X spine, if you will. You come around and you do the exact same thing I did before. You come up, bring this guy down so it's going to look professional, it's going to look like we kind of know what we're doing here. 
come around, come in between the hand and the thumb, turn over this way. Now, you have your first layer on here, so you can give this a little bit of tension and lay it down nice. Lay it down on there nice, and then just work your way around the hand. There's your professional looking, more, more professional looking cast. Overlap halfway every time, so again, it looks like you know what you're doing. And then, because we waited to fold this cut, this sleeve over until the end, now you can capture that sleeve with a second layer of fiberglass. And you've just locked down the sleeve, so if you're working with pediatrics, they can't undo it. Well, never say never, but you diminish the chances of them redoing it. Um, I'm going to finish this right here. I like to finish my end piece on the inside so that as people are looking at your cast, it looks very, very professional on the outside. However, again, if you're working with kids or you're working with like an unruly teenager, it's, it makes more sense to finish it on the outside where they can't mess with it as easily or pick at it as easily. So we're going to stop there for a second. I'm going to, I'm going to lube up my gloves for a second. I'm going to get that address that end piece first. I'm going to address that end piece, get it to adhere just a little bit, and then I can go back to shaping the rest of the cast. We want, like any traditional short arm cast, you want this to be nice and flat, not tight. You want to be able to get your finger in there, no problem. But you want it to lay flat to match the shaping of the two long bones that are in there, the radius, the ulna. You want to come in here, you want to create this cup in the hand. So even though he cannot use these two fingers functionally, he can still use his thumb and these two fingers, he can still hold things. So you want to create that nice little cup in there, that little palmer cup. You want to check all your edges, make sure they're flared out, the pinky as well. You want him to move that finger up and down, up and down. And if you see a part that looks a little sketchy, it looks a little sus, you want to get your finger in there, mat it down a little bit. Now, move your finger again. Better? You instruct the patient, they can do this at home. Remember, this part isn't super, super thick. You can get your thumb and you can flatten it out a little bit if you had to. You don't, want to, you don't want to mess with the cotton padding. You want to instruct them not to do that either. And then lastly, you come in here, get your fingers, hold the shape, get your hand, do the big spoon, little spoon thing. Give it a nice flat presentation on the back of the hand. Nice and flat L shape as close as possible, as much as they'll tolerate with a fracture. And then as you look at it head on, this is a radial gutter cast. Go. Thanks for watching you guys. Have a have a good day and we'll see you at the next video.